With the COVID situation and the lockdowns, jigsaws have become really popular. We can all sit and do a jigsaw when we're bored and have nothing else to do. But I thought today it might just be nice to make a jigsaw quilt. Now, I have made one before and there is a pattern in my Etsy shop, which you can always get. But today we're working from our stash and we're going to make a simple jigsaw quilt, a small one, a cot size, with what we already have. Hi there, my name's Elizabeth and I like to sew smart. And as I said, we're going to make a simple jigsaw quilt today and you can make it any size you would like to. I originally made it in a larger size. Um, instead of having my six and a half inch squares, which I'm working with today, I had 10 inch squares. And to give you an idea of the difference, this is the jigsaw tongue that you would use for the 10 inch squares that's on the pattern. And this is the one I'm using today as a template. This is a layout of the fabrics and the templates I'm using today. So these squares are six and a half inches and they're all basically, apart from a little spot there, they're all basically tone on tone fabrics that I have in my stash. However, if you haven't got that many, you could, put that the wrong way around, I just turned that around, you could use prints. Now I've got jungle prints underwater. These are all I spy squares that I'm using up. So if you've got I spy squares already cut and they're six and a half inches square, you can make this quilt using those squares. So for this quilt, you will need 20 different color tone on tones or spots. Anything you've got in your stash, you'll need 26 and a half inch squares and then you'll need some extra little scrap pieces just to cut the tongues out from. I've actually got three rows laid out here because of space on my table, but you will also need some black homespun fabric for the framing and then a border fabric to go on top of that. And all the details about how much you will need, of course, are in the pattern. So the first thing you will have to do is cut your six and a half inch squares and cut your tongues out and because you have got your I've laid mine out here you've got your pattern you know exactly how many to cut out how many tongues to cut out for each square in order to make my jigsaw tongues and the um, pieces stand out I also use and I've invested in some fusible bias tape now this is six millimeter bias tape comes with a tape on the back and you, all you will do is feed it round the jigsaw pieces and iron it down and then we'll stitch it down. It just gives a really definite division between your jigsaw pieces. The tape is made by Sew Easy, six millimeters wide and there's a five meter length on each pack. It is a little bit um, expensive, but it's well worth investing in because it really makes your quilt stand out. So step one, you've cut your squares and you've cut your tongues out. Now I cut, cut them with the Visafix on the back so I've removed the paper, I've just taken the paper off this one and following my pattern I'm just going to place that there. You can offset them a little bit to make your jigsaw pieces look different but I'm going to put mine there for this one. I'm going to iron on one row at a time following my pattern. So I'll take the paper off all of these on the top row don't stitch anything together, don't do any stitching at all, just iron the tongues on according to your pattern on each row. I've ironed all my tongues on according to my pattern and they're all nicely stuck down. All I have to do now, next step, is I need to, with row one, I need to pin and stitch, just pin that and pin it down and stitch a quarter inch seam, pin that one to that one, and then pin the end one on. And I'm just going to join them all along each row. And then I will join the horizontal rows together right to the bottom. I've joined my lines of uh, the squares vertically and horizontally now. I did the horizontal ones first, and then I've joined them together from top to bottom. Now to feed on the bias tape, I've just made a start there, you will line the bias tape up, pull the tape off the back 
and just feed that across to the very edge, the very edge of the tongue. I will just can catch that. Feed that round, it gets a little mitre in the corner there. You can do this, I'm, I'm doing it so that you can see it more clearly, but you get the hang of it. And you'll just feed that round in a circular shape. And you can see all the way down, I'll leave it at that point because I need to turn my work round, but you get a nice curve round your jigsaw tongues. So I'll bring that to the bottom and I'll show you when I've gone all the way across. I've ironed on my line and I did the vertical one first, the longer one, across there. You can do the shorter one if you prefer. All I need you to remember is if you haven't used the bias tape before, then do one line at a time and stitch it on before you put everything on. I normally put everything on at once and then just stitch, but I've used a lot of it. so. Just remember that as long as you stitch on both sides of your tape, then you'll do well. So I've ironed my bias tape on, got my nice curves. Now you will find it might just lift just a little bit, but be very careful. Now I'm going to stitch, you can use a twin needle, but I don't use one very often. Um, I'm going to stitch down on the left hand side of my tape, down to the point at the corner here. I'm going to come round the inside of the tongue, mainly because I want to be sure that there's no edge of fabric showing of the red fabric. And then I will come down on the left hand side, right the way down, and I will do that all the way across to the bottom. And then I'll come back on the other side and finish it off. So I'm starting, I've, I have got an open toe foot so that I can see. So all I'm going to do is just right on the edge, just come right down to that corner. I'm going to turn it and come up this side. I'll just push my a little bit slower so that you can see. I'm going to come very close to the edge all the way around and I'm going to go right the way down. Don't worry if it's a little bit off because it won't notice. I'm just trying to get you in camera shot. And up and turn it again. And because your tape is halfway over with your seams in the middle, you will catch it in anyway, so it won't make any difference if you just are, if your stitching is a little bit irregular right down right down to this bottom edge one more and then on to the next tongue and that will also catch in your seams underneath which will make them that much stronger right now this time I'm going to come across the corner because I want to go on the inside. I'm going to just come across that mitered corner to there and then I will go around the inside so that I keep the inside of my tongues on my jigsaw first and that way they won't slip away from the smaller piece. All the tape has now been sewn on. Don't be concerned if your fabric seem a little bit fuller in the jigsaw pieces because when you quilt, when you've got your layers together and you quilt that, it pulls it all up. So the next step is to just measure across your quilt. I've already measured my edge, measure across it. I'm going long ways first. I've got my quilt on the table the other way around now. So this is the longest side. And what I'm going to do, I've cut four strips two and a half inches wide of black homespun and I'm going to frame with the first border I'm going to put that round I'm going to cut that exactly in a minute 
stitch that on. It's two and a half inches wide, but of course, by the time you have um, got your two quarter inch seams in, it will end up two inches. And then I've cut my border strips, which I'm going to add as well. But first off, I'm going to put the black frame around it. That gives a very nice effect with the black tape outlining the jigsaw squares. I stitched the long sides on and I chose the long side first because I can get that out of one complete two and a half strip across the fabric. So now I'm going to do the same thing for the top and the bottom, measure across the fabric and cut the two strips to that size. And I'm going to stitch now the top and the bottom. The black frame is now all on and it really makes a nice contrast with the tape. And all I'm going to do now is do the same measurement long side first because again you will be able to get it out of the width of your fabric and I'm going to cut two pieces one either side of the long edge pin and sew those on and then do the same as we did with the black frame across the way pin and sew those on and then that will complete the top of your quilt my borders are now stitched on I cut them at five inches and you could cut yours wider or more narrow if you chose. And all you're left to do now is sandwich your quilt. As I said, I'm going to stipple in each individual jigsaw piece and that will pull up any loose fabric you've got. And you will need your backing fabric. I've chosen the same as my border and always cut your backing fabric and your wadding just slightly bigger than your quilt before you quilt it. So this is your jigsaw quilt. There is a pattern in my Etsy shop for this exact size. There is also the pattern, as I said earlier, for the one with the 10 inch squares and the bigger tongue. But if you've enjoyed this video, then give us a thumbs up and do subscribe. And then I look forward to seeing you next time when we'll be doing something brand new.